Hello, everyone. How do you do? Welcome back. It's good to see you. Howdy, folks. I hope you are excited to be back. I certainly am. Everyone, last week, in spite of a bit of a goof -em up we had a pretty great episode. We actually had two big goof -em ups First was the most obvious one. It was the internet crashing. The second one was that... Y'all remember at the beginning of that stream when I changed some of my audio settings? Well, there's like... Imagine a scale of 1 to 10, where a 1 is like no problem, no issues. It's actually kind of perfect. I don't need to do anything else extra. The settings are all correct. And a 10 is a setting where it causes about the most trouble that it could. Un uh, irretrievable, unfixable. Well, I went in last week and I was like, oh, I got to get I gotta get Austin's audio changed around. Because right now it's going to be recording at the same time as the, uh, on, on the same track as the music. So what I did was, I was hoping to take the setting and change it from about a four or three down to a one and make it perfect, make it the perfect setting. What I accidentally did was change it from a four to about an eight, which meant that the editing process was nightmarish, I guess I would say. I think that might be fair. Uh, it was wretched. So that was the other one. But... Uh, in spite of this, we had a pretty good episode last week. I had a great time. I want to say thank you once again, of course, to Mr. Halfbit for joining us last week. It was it was fantastic. I had so much fun, and I would really love to have more guests on here. Um, I am looking for some collaborators. Uh, I have got uh, a couple of folks in mind already, frankly, and uh, you know, one of them has... Uh, been sort of a newer friend to the channel. I'm not gonna I'm not gonna give out any names yet until they're available, but y'all, I'm really excited with where with where night school is at and where it's going. Really excited. And uh, that's an excitement that whatever tech issues we had last week cannot bring me down. So um, y'all, thank you so much for being here. Uh, thank you for participating. The 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 energy of a chat play campaign like this one is so entirely dependent on people showing up and being present and, and participating in what we're doing here. And, you know, Igor doesn't move unless y'all make him move. And Igor, Igor's been moving plenty. So I'm really thankful for y'all. Uh, thank you so much for being here. Thank you for participating. Thank you for uh, catching the vibe, catching the feeling for what I'm trying to do here. I'm having a ton of fun already, and uh, I I just I would love to just continue to do that. Um, folks, we've got a few features that I want to go ahead and highlight here uh, before we move on too much further. Uh, one of the first and foremost is that we've got a new command available. Um, now, the lore command uh, is going to do the same thing as the play command. Um, the I think I just popped it in too quickly afterward. There is a cooldown on it, but um, y'all can see the lore command slash the play command uh, is going to do something a little bit different now. Instead, it is the unified thing for everyone. So... When people jump in on the stream, you can use the lore command or the play command. Those, I, I've unified them all into one thing, and it gives all of the, I think, all of the important instructions that should be on people's plates. So, uh, all of you folks who have become regulars at this point, uh, Sander and Gems, of course, longtime regulars, and then uh, Deathrave, who's a newer regular, but a regular nonetheless. I hope you're all excited for today. How have you been? What have you been up to this week? Ooh, gems. Gem says, I just introduced some of my students to the secret of Nim tonight. Now, I don't know how many of y'all are familiar with uh, the secrets of the, the secret of Nim, the rats of Nim. Um, that one, frankly, I don't even remember why. It's it's one of those, uh, a little bit like the Animorphs uh, uh, finale books, wherein. I don't remember precisely why they were so impactful, why why they seemed to hit me so hard. I don't remember the details of it, but I do remember those were some like those were some devastating books when I was younger. Um, in, in a way that I consider positive, you know, they 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 were telling important stories well. Um, it wasn't just sort of like frivolous like 
uh, <laughs> emotional whiplash. Um, no, devastating in a in a in a growth sort of way, which is so interesting. The, that it's it's a story about rats, you know. And of course, there's like the whole rat race kind of thing. The the you know the the pursuit of of wealth. That's kind of a motif. But as far as I remember, the the rat race motif theme did not come up much in the Rats of Nim. It was it was telling a different story, and I could be wrong about that. But yeah, wow. And it's so funny, too, because it's such a specific little world, isn't it? Right? It's not It's not sort of, you know, even a world like Redwall. Um, Redwall is, I would say, not a, not a hyper-specific world. It is essentially just sort of, um, uh, there's a lot of specificity that's gone into it. But when we talk about the, the core concepts of it, it's essentially, it is uh, medieval, sort of like, what, I would put it at 15, 1600s? Um, uh, but animals instead of people, right? That's kind of the, that's, that's most of it. Whereas the rats of Nim, it's like, it's very specifically certain animals, um, that live in like certain ways and are affiliated with this, this sort of like Nim project. Very strange, very strange. Um, but in a way that doesn't sort of like turn me off to it. That's the trouble with making a hyper-specific world is that, you know, sometimes people are like, ah, I just don't connect with that part of it. Like, if I were to tell you all that, you know, uh, our, our next season on the of, of this was going to be, like, you're all uh, astronauts who get trapped in a water park. Like, that's really specific and strange. And for a lot of you, it'd be like, I don't know. I just don't know if I can get behind that based on that pitch. Rats of Nim, it's a very specific one, and yet it just didn't turn me off. Maybe it was just the maybe it was just the time in my life in which I was introduced. Folks, my name is Sam, and this is Sidecar Stories. This is specifically the tabletop RPG wing of Sidecar Stories. Side cannons! Y'all. This is Side Cannons, and this is our second season of Side Cannons. Our second official season, you know, of course, we've had uh, a couple of one-shots. We had our eight-part miniseries, The After, using the Fiasco system. This is our first campaign using the Iron Sworn system, and I am stoked. We've had such a great time so far, and this is episode seven today. Can you believe it's been seven episodes? It doesn't feel nearly that long to me. We began our story, of course, with Igor and Illyria. Um, Igor, a little elf boy, and Illyria, uh, a human, coming from the uh, the Iron Lands up north. Igor and Illyria are traveling together. They are in this little town called Dongreet. Um, it is a little bit east of the... Resetus Towers, the massive metropolis at the heart of the realms of Resetus, um, but they are out in the shallow frontier. They're supposed to case this little town. They're doing this for a, a frontier gang called the Wild Stallions, who are going to be coming back with a couple of expectations. They want Igor to case the town, and they want Illyria to deliver a box south for them. We don't know what's in the box. We don't know why necessarily, I should say why specifically, they want Igor to case the town, but these are our responsibilities. Through a terrible turn of events, we encounter these hunters with runic weapons who we later come to know are called Luka Bruska. Igor, after their, after a, a scuffle with these hunters and after they get run off by the town guard into the forest, um, the... This runic weapon, this uh, these, these runes that we've seen on the weapons, um, we see a chain covered with these runes, and that is the weapon that kills Igor. That's right, at the end of episode one, Igor has died. Uh, over the course of the next few episodes, the two of us, uh, Illyria having been bit by uh, some strange wolves out in the forest, 
Igor coming back uh, and, uh, you know, sort of hanging out alongside Illyria as a ghost, these two make their way to Castle Vesperal. It is a uh, an old, burned-out carcass of a castle on a hilltop overlooking Dawn Greet um, at a considerable distance. Uh, but they find that this is, indeed, Vesperal Academy. This is a school for Duskin. Duskin being ghosts, vampires, lichen, and they are making some friends, maybe some enemies, and the two of them are learning quite a bit about who they are and what their place is in the world. It's exciting times. Um, at the end of our last episode, our last episode being part of Igor's Travails, this is a, uh, a process wherein ghosts sort of immersively relive certain parts of their their history that might be important to their legacy and might be important to them passing on. During this travail experience, Igor sees his passage through Crag Carrick. Uh, it's between two parts of the towers, and uh, it is... It's a rough go. Igor has a very tough time, and Igor actually witnesses some things that are not entirely within Igor's own experience specifically. Igor sort of sees through the eyes of the person who brought them through the crag, Dart, a.k.a. Addison, um, and Addison, uh, being on his own journey to uh, find his lost partner, discovers that his partner has joined a group hiding in the mountains, a group that promises that they will allow them to strike back at those creatures who are responsible for the disappearances in the gate town, for, uh, for the shadows that Dart's partner seems to see in every, in every alleyway. This group is called Luca Brusca. That is the end of our review, and I hope that y'all will enjoy today as we in, uh, as we embark on Chapter 7 of Night School at Vesperal Academy. Is this what you expected? Is this what you thought you would see? Your trip through Craig Carrick, the trip that brought you out from your home. You've learned two very strange things, at least. First, you learn it wasn't simply a random turn of fate. Gangsters feeling generous. It was your sister. Your sister was the one who arranged for your passage out of your gate town. Out of your home, the gate town of Vistretta. She's the reason you left. And she never told you. Second, you find that your terrifying encounter in Dawn Greet. The scuffle that you had, and indeed this memory that you have, 
possibly connected, although it's uncertain, of runes on the chain that killed your mortal form. Luca Brusca. That was not your first encounter with Luca Brusca. As you lay unconscious, having been struck twice by lightning from a thunderbird, elsewhere, deeper in that same cave where your body struggled to live, elsewhere in that same cave, Dart, the smuggler that brought you across Crag Carrick, found his partner, Stravaris. And Stravaris had asked Dart to stay. To stay with this group, Luca Brusca. Now, I don't know what you expected to hear, necessarily, Igor, but this probably wasn't it. You sit up and you can see Pinelli next to you uh, is sort of coming out of the exact same days. There are tears on her cheeks. They sort of glisten uh, as they fall onto her whimsical polka dotted outfit. Um, she wipes her tears and throws on a quick smile. The organ music here in this room coming from the organ, uh, haunted by Eliza, the ghost beak, who is sort of presiding over this particular process, the travails. The organ music fades gently, brings you back to the material world in a comforting way. Terua is wandering around, uh, ministering to the different students here who are experiencing their own memories. Some of them, you can see, lie on the floor, still trapped in whatever brought them to this point. Igor is in a daze and puts a hand to his face where, Igor, you can still feel it burning. And now when you put your hand there, you're reminded of a scar that faded for a while, but now you can feel it against your ghostly skin. In fact, Penelope turns and as she wipes the last tear off her face, she, her eyes go wide um, and she, she says, Igor. She reaches out and just touches your temple, sort of next to your eye, and looks closely. She says, You're glowing. Is this like those tattoos that the headmistress has got? Glo Igor says, They better not expect me to be the ball. <laughs> no, 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 no. You aren't going to be the ball, Igor. Uh, there's it's some bewitched thing uh, some of the upper class f students have put together. It's going to be like nothing I've ever seen before. I'm excited. I'm excited. So, are you going to be participating, Valeria? I, I'm going to try. I don't know if the teams are already set, but uh, I've been hearing about it. You remember that... Um, uh, there's that upper class student who blocked us off at the murder hole and told us we shouldn't leave the castle. Turns out he's a were ram. He's uh, he's got big curly horns underneath that hat when he transforms, and well, he's he's a hell of an athlete. He's the one who's been talking about it. I'll participate if they'll let me. How about you? Are you going to give it a shot? I know that this is not necessarily your... Uh, your number one interest, but... Well, it could be fun, right? He's... Uh, oh. Oh, Igor. Igor! 
the two of you uh, continue to walk through the halls of the school, and uh, you find yourselves, um, you have sort of gotten used to the schedule. The schedule of the castle, of course, um, you go to bed as the sun is rising and you are waking up as the sun is going down. Um, the nocturnal schedule has gotten a lot more comfortable and Igor, you find that as you walk past the windows of this place, some of them are glass that you have come to understand is called shadow glass. Um, that's what it is inside the great hall and inside the library. Uh, it allows you to be there during sunlight hours and not be too uncomfortable, but when you walk past the windows here, the moonlight doesn't burn cold like the sunlight does. It doesn't make it difficult for you to remember who you are or why you are here on this particular day and this time on this plane. No, the moonlight feels good. And Illyria, you notice, doesn't seem to be squinting anymore. The dim light of torches uh, and the dim light of the moon outside, even, even if it is small, Illyria doesn't seem to be bothered by it anymore. As a matter of fact, when Illyria looks around, you sometimes see their eyes sort of stray upward and instead their nose twitches. They're relying more and more on sense of smell to pick up detailed information, and occasionally, Illyria will call out someone who is in the room before you even notice them. So does now. Wait, wait, Igor, hold on. Igor, wait, wait here. You look down this long corridor, and Illyria, although there's no one there, Illyria says, I don't think we can talk here. The headmistress is nearby. And indeed, crossing the hall ahead of you, slowly looking out the window as she passes, is indeed the headmistress. She remains covered in this very pale, pale gray uh, uh, robe uh, with a hood over her head and her arms, half exposed, uh, run with these very elegant glowing white tattoos, a sort of a very faint glow, reminiscent now of the blue glow of your sort of electric scar, Igor. She looks out the window and before passing on completely, she turns her head and looks at the two of us, frozen in place here in the hallway. Her eyes glow faintly in this dark upper hallway, mostly unlit by torches, the moonlight just filtering in from outside, and it's fainter than her tattoos, but her eyes glow with that same white. A sneer comes to her lips quickly, but she covers it with her hands and moves on quickly. Almost embarrassed, it would seem. Um, the headmistress doesn't say much, does she? I think I've seen her once since we arrived here. She welcomed us into the castle and told us a little bit about what they do here, but I don't think I've even seen her since then. This might be the first time I've seen her since that night. Have you seen the headmistress at all? I don't even know her name. I want to talk to her. You want to talk to her? Well. You can give it a shot, but <laughs> Igor, I, I'm going to tell you right now, I don't. So you go on ahead, I'm going to head back to the bunks. 
Illyria puts out a hand to uh, stop you as you start to go. Um, Igor just says, She seems interesting. Illyria puts out this hand to stop you, and their hand sort of passes through your shoulder. Right? Sorry. Sorry. I'm sure that's uncomfortable for both of us. Igor, we have to be careful, because... We need to go back to Dungrit at least one time. You and I are going to have to finish up our objectives there. If the Wild Stallions come back and expect you to have a full understanding of the town of Dungrit and expect me to have that box in hand, we're going to be in some trouble. So. Go have your chat. I'm going back to the bunk rooms. You just come back quickly. We've got to make some plans. I think we have to go tonight. Igor nods and floats off down the hallway. Illyria... sniffs the air, turning back over his shoulder, Igor just simply says, Give me five minutes. You see the headmistress walking briskly down the hallway, continuing toward what you know to be the belfry. Um, it is part of the keep. It is the highest part of this part of the castle, uh, of the core of the castle. There are some ruined towers that do stretch a bit higher, but the belfry is where the headmistress resides and presides over the school. As you catch up to the headmistress, Igor, you feel a little colder. like a chill has gone through the corridor. The headmistress slows her pace, but doesn't turn to face you. She slows down to a fairly comfortable walk, and as you approach from behind, she says, Igor, how are you finding your first days at the academy? I hope your travails have gone well for you. I hope they have not been too uncomfortable. Um, uh, Headmistress, do you have an affinity for the bells or... Do you just feel more comfortable with the bats? She stops and spins on her heel, and you end up right in front of her, uh, looking very closely into her eyes as they glow this pale moon glow down at you. She's got a, a fairly young face, maybe mid-late 20s, and... Her face also has these same tattoos ornately running down her arms. Her eyes, in spite of this soft glow, are piercing. Uh, uh, interesting to say the least, and they were a harsh reminder of my old self. Of your old self. Hmm. There are not many who come back from the travails this self-aware after their first time. Igor does not know her name. A good question. And yet... My name is Franceliska. Does it interest you to know my name and to understand how I spend my time? 
She smirks. But she covers her her mouth with her hands, putting them up in front of her um, in a cover that you sort of notice is practiced. Um, she seems to... <laughs> it's it's a gesture almost of sort of pensiveness. We're going to go ahead and have you make a heart roll here, Igor. Weak hit. I spend my time in the Belfry because it is where I can keep an eye on the school. I see... I see interesting things in your future, Igor. This smirk reveals what I think possibly you already knew, but vampire fangs uh, underneath her lip. And uh, these long fangs are pristine white. Not like Professor Barsarand, uh, or if the Bone Man, uh, whose fangs are, are dark and stained, but instead absolutely gleaming pristine white almost glowing with that same moon glow of her eyes. She leans into you and says, There is much to see from the Belfry, and not so much seeing, not so many eyes on me. Of course, the way that you conduct yourself, I can imagine, you might at least resonate with that idea. Um, uh, yes, my lady. Uh, as you said, I, I am new here, but I'd like to think that I I'm quick-witted. Do you have any advice for a green ghost boy? The smirk comes back, and now it's less of a sneer and more of sort of a genuine smile of amusement. I do. Listen to your teachers. They have been selected carefully. But never forget that as much as we can do for you here, there is a solitude. You have got beaks, other students, but in the end, it's going to come down to you and who you choose to become. That sounds lonely. She pauses for a long time. It is lonely, but not always. It is good to meet you, Igor. I'm sure I will be seeing you again. She turns on her heel once more, covering her smirk, and departs up a staircase. <sighs> Igor. You don't remember sweating much since becoming a ghost, and yet, if you could sweat, you'd be feeling it right now. The headmistress is a cold presence. You call up the stairs after her. Do you think I could return to talk sometime? And her voice fades as though down a long tunnel, impossibly long for having just disappeared around the corner there. Her voice comes back and says, Of course, any time you wish to climb into the belfry. And as her voice disappears down at the end of this long tunnel that you can hear, a very faint bell rings above. Boom. 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 Igor, 
you go back down the hallway in this sweat brought on by uh, the very strange and powerful presence of the headmistress, Franciliska. You head back to the bunk rooms, and uh, you find our friend Illyria out on the balcony. The two of you look down over the valley containing Dawngreet and the wide forest. Um, off in the distance, you can see, of course, the lights from Dawngreet. Beyond that, the lights of Airely, uh, which is another town further along down the road. You're on sort of the wrong side of the castle to see the towers. And you're not even sure if you could at the distance that you're currently at. You're far enough out, it might be tough to see the towers from here. But looking down over this quiet little valley, you've got some time to talk together. And Illyria, Igor, the two of us find ourselves uh, at a time for a little conference. We have to make some plans. So, how was your chat with the headmistress? Did you learn a lot, or did you just get the absolute heebie-jeebies like I do? I don't want to spend much time with her. Did you learn anything important? I don't care for her. I'm sorry. I probably shouldn't say it. I don't know what she can hear. Uh, sh uh, <laughs> uh, Illyria sort of like looks up and around and sort of peeks their head around toward the belfry. Um, a bell gently rings there up above. And Illyria's eyes go wide, but nothing else happens. So, <laughs> uh, Igor says, She was amazing. Illyria raises their eyebrows. Oh, amazing, you say. Huh. All right. You seem like you are willing to be amazed by quite a few people around here. Where is Penelope, by the way? And Illyria, like, just fully grins at you, knowing what's up. Do you think, um... Do you think we'll be seeing a lot more of Penelope from here? Igor simply says, I think that the headmistress is going to prove to be a great leader to us here. Well, I'll agree with you as far as this. While we're here, yes, probably a good leader, but we're not always going to be here. They sort of said as much themselves. I, I think it was the headmistress who sort of announced that on our first night here. We're going to have to make it for ourselves, like we were before. At the end of the day, or at the end of the night, I suppose, you and I are still responsible for our own survival. And that means we need to go probably very soon. We might want to try and collect some supplies before we leave, but... Igor, we have got to finish our missions, otherwise we could be in danger. I don't know about you, but where I'm from, the Wild Stallions have got a bit of a reputation. They... They were, they treated me all right on my way south from the Oxbands, but this is not their way. Not always. They can be dangerous, and we don't want to encourage that sort of danger. So, um, Illyria pulls out the little slate upon which they have been sketching the castle, uh, and you can see that they they have got like a, a pretty decent rough little sketch here put together. Um, and the two of us take a look. Illyria says, "Now I'm I'm going to be relying on you to get us back to Dongreet. I I have tried to map out some of the major contours of the valley to get us back to Dongreet, but it's going to be tough." Igor, I I'm, I'm not sure that we're going to make very good time, which is why early in the day, early in the night, I'm, I'll get used to it eventually, early in the night, we probably need to go. I say we, we take a little bit of time to look for some supplies just in case we need, and then we go back, we take another quick look around, we retrieve the box, which I can only hope is still there. I can only hope it's still there. 
Otherwise, we're in a lot of trouble. Or at least I'm in a lot of trouble. Igor says, I'm with you, Illyria, as always. They smile. Thank you, Igor. All right, we are in a lot of trouble if I don't have that box. So, <sighs> let's separate. We're going to look for some supplies. Um, when we come back, I want to meet you at... There, there's a class I've discovered. They're going out. It's a, a group of... Um, uh, they're not upper class. They're still lower class, but they're going out onto the grounds. And I think perhaps we can try to accompany them and hopefully not be spotted, but we have to get away from the castle. We have to be prepared to be gone for most of the day, so maybe some food, maybe some some gear. I don't know what we're going to need. But we get away, and we are back by sunrise. All right. Any questions? Anything? Uh, I'm not really the planner on this sort of thing, but I've been thinking about it nonstop, and... Uh, I, let me know if you can see any holes in this plan, or if you think we should just go. Um, Igor mentions the secret supply room, uh, and Leary's eyes go kind of wide. A secret supply room? Are you sure it's a secret? Well, no, I'm, I'm not so sure it's a secret, but it is quiet, and... There is a secret lying just behind it. It's a door down into the dungeons below the castle. Below the castle. Like below the lower corridors even. Oh, is this where he, is this where you met that creature? The creature from uh, that suit of armor. Yes. But I know that this storeroom it is probably used by some of the beaks, but not many students. All right, well, don't get caught. I'm going to go look for some food. You get us some ingredients. Uh, I'm going to look for some gear as well. Uh, the expeditioneering classes have, well, showed me where some of the old used gear is, and so I'm going to try and get my hands on some of it. All right, I'll meet you here in this corridor. We need to uh, join this group if we're going to get through Bailey Tower. So we're going to meet just outside in the west wing. Are you ready? All right, let's go. And the two of you separate off uh, to go and do your hunting. All right, let's now try and uh, let's let's try and gather up some supply. So resupply when you hunt, forage, or scavenge. Roll plus wits. Um, here we go. Here we go. Um, and Igor, I believe you are down by one. Uh, down by one momentum because uh, that that partial success that you had with um, uh, with the um, uh, with the headmistress. Good grief! There we go. All right. So our first roll is going to be for Igor. Igor, you head on down to this supply room and let's see how well you fare. Are you able to find ingredients that might be useful for this? And I can tell you, against a five and a one, you got a six flat, which means that uh, plus your wits, that gets you absolutely up to a full success. Exciting! Igor, you slip down into the storeroom very quickly, in and out, very, very quickly, and you make a killing in here. You have got plus two supply, um, which we're going to track in your uh, uh, we're gonna track in, I mean, I guess the herbalist category. Um, so you have now got two supply and that's gonna come in handy. Uh, this can be used for alchemy stuff, but also for other things. Uh, supply might be sort of used up by certain rough moves. Uh, you can use them for alchemy. And, uh, now I don't think we've got enough time for you to do any brewing right now. Unfortunately, we've been pretty busy, but it is time to head over to Illyria, who is also going to do uh, a quick hunt here. Um... All right, against a four and a 10, I've rolled a one. And I'm gonna be paying the price here. Illyria is wandering around uh, down near a closet, uh, wherein 
They know there are some old expeditioneering packs. Part of the, one of the programs here, expeditioneering, is a pretty profitable little profession, and protecting expeditioneers uh, even more so. And as such, the classes here are pretty well stocked. Illyria ducks into this closet and trying to collect a few things, suddenly the door swings open behind them. I wasn't, I'm sorry, I, I didn't. You are going to just keep causing trouble, aren't you? It is, once again, the, now we know to be a were-ram. Um, his name is Corzon, and Corzon is a uh, tall uh, were-creature. Um, a human with uh, pretty significant buck teeth and uh, a hat over an afro, um, but built and tough, and Corzon says, this is going to be an absolutely the last time. Ilaria, I am going to have to talk to Grizzly about this, of course, but this behavior from you is unacceptable. You know that trust is paramount to the process of expeditioneering. You are not going to be able to survive this program if you cannot be trusted. You understand this, of course, yes? Um... Yes, and I, 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 I'm, I'm sorry. I'm sorry, Corzon. I, I'm, I'm going to do better. I was just hoping to examine some of the equipment. I have not done any expeditioneering before, and you are going to have plenty of time to examine the equipment during your classes. All right. So for now, you get out of the closet. You leave all this alone. Either that, or you're going to be transferred off into another part of the the academy, and. I don't want you with me. If you're going to be the one watching my back on the expedition, well, I don't know if I can be trusting you back there to watch my back because I, you might have your hands going through my pack. Get out of here. Illyria, with shame, hangs their head and briskly walks off down the hallway. Uh, Corzon behind, uh, starts to rearrange uh, the packs in here, and unfortunately, this puts Illyria at zero favor. Which means if Illyria gets caught again, it means bad news. Already, uh, some of the Beaks have heard Illyria's name, causing some trouble. Igor has been a bit more, uh, uh, a bit more subtle a bit less obvious, um, but the two of us are absolutely making enough trouble. We're on our way toward detention or worse, whatever punishment they've got around here. We're headed in that direction. As, as Illyria heads off down the hallway, back to our meeting place, entirely empty-handed, they pass Chu. Chu and the rest of the werewolf pack that wanders the halls. They are leaned up against the wall here, and when Illyria comes around the corner, Chu is sort of peeking around, kind of furtively. Oh! Illyria! Illyria. Listen, not right now, okay? And uh, Chu just sort of waves Illyria on. Not wanting to cause much more trouble, Illyria just continues to move because some of the rest of these werewolves are glaring in her direction, starting that little form up thing that they do when, when a threat approaches of some sort. But Illyria notices and turns back. Let me try to make a heart roll here to see if I can suss out what this is all about. Um, against a one and a two, I've got a four, which means yes. And as Illyria continues down the hallway, they notice Chu's eyes don't follow Illyria. As much as Illyria feels like Chu has been obsessing over them for these past few days, no. Chu's eyes remain on Corzon peeking around this corner, almost furtively. Some of the other werewolves indeed look a little bored. There's a little bit of eye rolling going on. And that's the last that 
Illyria sees as they head off down the hallway. Illyria and Igor meet at Bailey Tower. Bailey's Tower is what separates the keep of the castle from the advanced studies wing. Uh, the Barbican, the uh, advanced studies, uh, the artificer wing, and the important Scullaport Tower. Because Scullaport Tower, instead of the main entrance, Scullaport Tower is the entrance that is used to get in and out of the castle. And so, as the two of us meet, we try to blend in with this group of students that are on their way outside. Up at the front of this class, there is a vampire, uh, and she is um, uh, quietly explaining to this group that they are going to be looking for material ingredients today for their uh, for their spell casting. Um, very important, and uh, this class is where we're going to try and blend in. Deathrave says Illyria needs to let Igor do the sneaky stuff, sneak, sneaky stuff from here on out. Um, Gems is wondering. I want to know about the blue tattoos. Um, uh, Gems, are you referring to uh, sort of the lightning, the, the the blue lightning scar on Igor, or are you referring to the glowing white tattoos on the headmistress? Let me see what uh, what I can do vis-a-vis -vis a wits roll on this for Igor. Let's see what Igor does know about these uh, these white tattoos. Uh, I, I would say you know this much about these white tattoos. So far, you have seen them on two people. Well, three people. Excuse me, two groups of people. The first, the first group slash person is the headmistress, um, uh, uh, headmistress Franciska. But the other people that you've seen it on so far have also been vampires. They are visitors to the castle, and you've seen them sort of uh, duck their heads in and out. These are people that Illyria saw. Um, they actually arrived in town in Dawngreet um, at roughly the same time as your death, Igor. Um, and uh, these two are clearly also vampires. So I would say that is most of what you know. Um, the uh, simply the vampire connection. Other than that, it's hard to tell. I think that's what you've been able to piece together. You've not seen them on uh, any ghosts or any lichen, uh, and you've only seen them on a few of the vampires. I think that's what you know about the about the uh, the, the white tattoos. Okay, um, we are about to head on out of the castle. Uh, it is dangerous for us to be doing so, but Igor. Do you have anything special that you would like to cover here before we try and make our escape? We gotta sneak out and we gotta sneak back in by sunrise. We sidle up behind this class and uh, we try to keep our heads down. I'm gonna roll for Igor first. Igor, this is plus your shadow, of course. Against a two and a 10, you've got a three, four, five, six. Um, I don't think six, I mean seven, but it's not going to get you up to a 10. So that is a partial success, um, which I think is going to be bad news for us. We're facing danger on a weak hit. We succeed, but we face a troublesome cost. Minus one momentum, minus, uh, let's see, one harm, one stress, or minus one favor. I don't think, I, I mean, Igor, this is going to put you down to your last favor. Or I, I should, like this this uses up your last favor. You're now going to be at zero favor. The teacher, distracted, says, You, Igor, you're not part of this particular group. Please go back to your classes. Hmm. But doesn't pay too much mind. Igor ducks back in and... With zero favor, both of us are cruising for some uh, some consequences here. Meanwhile, you're going to try and help Illyria because Illyria needs all the help they can get. On a weak hit, your advantage is short-lived. Take plus one momentum. Okay, well, that is good. So uh, I have now got plus one momentum, uh, which actually puts me at a plus nine momentum, uh, which means that y'all have set me up really nicely to succeed on this check. Um, 
We're gonna try and sneak on out of here. I have absolutely no favor to spare on this thing. I don't have any special moves that are going to allow me to make this happen. But it doesn't matter, baby, because I've got a plus nine momentum and I cancel both of those out with a strong hit. We make our way out into the grounds. Yes! Yes! We did it, gang! The two of us, we follow this little group as we pass through the long hallway, which uh, the this vampire teacher jokingly calls the welcome hall. We know this hall to be the very same one in which we encountered a dozen traps over the course of this short hallway, and so the welcome hall must be a tongue-in-cheek name. But as we pass through, um, this vampire waves their hands and uh, stops at certain intervals and stops the entire party before continuing forward and navigates this welcome hall without incident, certainly without traps. We leave through the small door in Tower Scullaport, this ruined tower which is the concealed true entrance of the castle itself. We leave, and that is when we take our opportunity to steal away from this group. And now, Igor and Illyria, the two of us, with no favor to spare, which is not going to treat us well when we try to re-enter the castle, we are home free to get away from Castle Vesperal. A gentle... Ding, 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 ding. The bells in the belfry ring, maybe stirred just simply by wind, or perhaps, perhaps not. It doesn't matter for right now. Neither of us take too much notice as we steal away from the group and into the forest. <laughs> crunch of the snow underneath our feet almost muffles the sound of Illyria smelling the wind. They've got a big smile on their face. As the two of us uh, traipse into the forest for what Illyria at least hopes will be one of our last clandestine trips out of the castle. Igor, I don't mind following the rules and I would love to be able to do more of it. I'm hoping this is going to be our last clandestine trip out of Castle Vesperal. Now, I can get us to roughly the right places, but I think we're going to rely on, well, you for a lot of this trip. So I've got my slate here. I I'm sorry I wasn't able to put together any supplies. I, I got caught. I actually saw something kind of interesting, but I'll, I'll tell you about it on the way. We just have to get headed in the right direction. The two of us head down through the forest, and before long, we reach a small road, uh, which leads us in roughly the correct direction, and if we turn to the left, we can see it heads back up sort of toward the River Argent, as we've come to know it's called. Uh, but if we head uh, off to the right, it takes us to this little puddle of light that we've seen from our balcony before. It's very subtle, very quiet. Igor says, I think that we are okay this time. Those bells just now. It's probably Mr. Franceliska just seeing us off. Franceliska. Well, I'll take your word for it. I hope not, because I don't want to make a bad impression on the headmistress. Oh, I, I... There's just a scent of danger around Headmistress Franceliska. I don't care for it. I know you're smitten, but then again, when is that not true? Hey, it looks like your scar has come back in a serious way. Indeed, you very, very faintly, when you pass very close to a tree, some of the bark lights up very faintly blue. We proceed down this little road, and 
We don't walk straight through this puddle of light, which it turns out is a small ranch and wagon yard. Um, there are animals here nearby, quite a collection of uh, steers and uh, other animals, uh, sheep, pigs, some chickens. It takes a moment for you to snap Illyria back toward our objective as they simply stop and stare at the pen full of sheep. But you managed to get Illyria back on the right track. This little ranch also has a water wheel nearby, and beside the water wheel, a little bridge. Igor says, It's not dinner time yet, Illyria. Uh, I'm, yeah, right, I'm sorry. Um, all right, once we cross this bridge, it's going to be up to you. So I hope you've got your wits, wits about you. <laughs> Hold on. Illyria goes very quiet as you circumvent this little ranch. Their nose points up into the wind. Wait, wait. I smell blood. It's not fresh, but it's almost fresh. And I have had a couple of meals here since getting bit. Illyria has, for the past few days, been very hesitant to mention what's coming for them. But since I got bit, I've... I, I can tell the difference between different animal blood. And this isn't that. Someone bled here a lot, a person. I don't, I, I haven't smelled a lot of orc blood versus uh, elf blood versus human blood, but it's not an animal. We need to avoid that water wheel. The river is not terribly wide here, and uh, Illyria, I think, suggests that rather than getting too close there, we should try and wade across it. Wade slash swim. I don't know how you are at this, Igor, but Illyria is going to try and bring us both across. A weak hit. Upriver at this ferry. The smell of blood continues to waft down. Illyria doesn't like it. The two of us start to wade across, and Illyria suddenly finds that, oh, that's right. <laughs> There's no sense in trying to haul Igor across the river, because Igor can probably just go ahead and float the thing. Um, now, this does not prevent us from taking this weak hit, uh, which I think for me is going to mean minus one momentum. But Igor, you can try to make it for your own self. Ooh, boy. Even if you uh, try to manifest yourself and uh, use some of your haunt for this. That's a miss. You drift. A sudden sort of draw pulls you toward this wheelhouse. As you are drawn toward it uh, from the water, Illyria says, No, Igor, Igor, this way. Igor, no, Igor, Igor. But Igor, you are pulled as if by a strong wind on your ghastly form as you try to float over this river. And you find yourself materializing on the bridge on the bridge itself across this river. You're very close now to the wheelhouse, this water wheel that paddles gently through the water, splashing. 
Illyria is probably 20 yards, 20 meters down the river uh, and struggling to get over to the other side already because the current is stronger than they imagined. But you are here very close to this wheelhouse. And inside, you can see the ghost of an elf just through the slit of a uh, of the door hanging ajar you can see this ghost just for a moment but it whips its eyes over towards you and you see fangs like a vampire but that can't be right Meanwhile, Illyria has sort of just struggled over to the other side of the river. Uh, Deathrave says, Igor thinks this is one of the bad ghosts he's learned about. Uh, very possibly. What do we think? Basically, you've got two big options. You, you can try to move away, or you can try to investigate further. Those are sort of your two, uh, your two big possibilities right now. Deathrave is saying to uh, to try and sneak away. Uh, I'm going to leave it open for just a second to see if anyone else wants to weigh in on this. But otherwise... Otherwise, we will go with that. What do y'all think? Let me, make a, let me make a roll here just to, to prepare, but I'm not going to look at it yet. All right, the roll is made. Your fate is sealed, Igor. Either way, that's what your roll is going to be. I'm not looking yet. I'm not looking yet. Um, does he feel a dark presence from it, says Death Rave. An interesting question. Igor, for just a moment, peers in through this door as the ghost takes notice of Igor out on the bridge and then ducks behind the door, seemingly not wanting to be seen. And you definitely get an air of... Not malice, but you can feel how far back in their little cave this ghost has gone. It gives off a strong aura of having forgotten who it is. You've heard of these ghosts. This is what a poltergeist looks like. And you've been warned how dangerous they can be. It's different from the ghost down in the dungeon. The ghost or presence in the dungeon, which Terua and Eliza have yet to ask you about more thoroughly, but they've expressed to you that whatever that was, it wasn't a ghost that they know about. This ghost that you saw uh, here in the uh, here in this wheelhouse definitely seems to be a ghost, but one of the dangerous sorts, and uh, appears to be an adult mid late 30s and he has got um a pair of broken uh crossbow bolts uh embedded in him from down river um there is a there's a gentle crunching in the snow Igor what is it Igor starts to hurry away, and with your shadow, with a th against a three and a three, you have rolled a three, which plus your stats means that this is a strong hit with a twist. Igor, you start to quietly turn and back away from this wheelhouse. The paddle continues to churn through the water, and inside you hear just the scuffling and creaking of this poltergeist rumbling around inside. As you reach this other side and join Illyria, something... a faded yellow sticks out from the snow here. And when you bend to pick it up, you find a sheet of parchment, a tiny scroll that reads, Dear Diary, I fear my secret 
is known. I feel her eyes upon me. My betrayal will only be met with the worst, either here or back with the house. Using the River Argent was a mistake. It's too well viewed. I fear my time is quickly coming to an end. But not yet. Not yet. My accomplice killed in the wheelhouse. I have got some cover from the investigation that is about to commence. I fear I shall not last long. The two of us uh, continue on toward Dawn Greet. The week hit. Um, the two of us are going to stumble on through the forest. Um, I think it's looking like we are potentially going to come in a little bit late here. And as such, as the two of us proceed, uh, Igor sort of half distracted by this piece of parchment that you found. Illyria is much more concerned with getting us to Dawn Greet with enough time to find that box and get us back to Castle Vesperal in time. Now, Igor, um, your health is decent, but your spirit is not awesome. And I think the two of us, as we waste a little bit of time here in the forest, we each take minus one to our spirit. Got to get back in time. We've got to be back in time. Igor, Igor, pay attention. I don't know what you've got there, but we need to be able to get back by sunrise. Otherwise, I don't know what's going to happen. Against a three and a ten to examine this piece of parchment. Igor, you've scored a three uh, for five. That's going to be enough for a weak hit. You've got Illyria pointed in the right direction, but as you examine this piece of parchment, this one with the dear diary at its head, this is the second that you've found like this, and it continues to talk about this sort of, um, this conflict between uh, loyalties, it continues to talk about um, uh, a potential risk of discovery. Uh, clearly the writer of this is sort of operating in secret. Whoever these thoughts belong to operates in secret, doing something illicit, something that they would get in a lot of trouble for if they were discovered, but also it seems something they would get a lot of, in a lot of trouble for if they weren't successful, a bit like the two of us now. We seem to be surrounded by danger. The information that you get from this parchment altogether is that it's got a heavy aura to it. As a ghost, you've become more and more in tune with auras in general. And the aura that this parchment gives off is a strong one. A dark one tied into a dark fate. Clearly, the future of the person to whom these thoughts belong is clouded. And it's the same cloud that you have felt uh, in sort of like the lower parts of the castle... You're surrounded by spirits, of course, but down in the depths of the castle, you feel the absolute depths of some of the darker spirits that have passed these halls. I think that I should show this to the headmistress later. Okay, is it important? What is it? Just what did you find? Igor wonders to himself, does it feel like holding on to this could affect you? And I think it's possible. It's possible that it could, yes. But you're not sure. 
I'm gonna make one more roll for us to continue our way back toward uh, Dawn Greet. And uh, Igor, now that you've had a chance to really examine this parchment, you're able to focus more on navigating. And you get us back to Dawn Greet without further issue. Now comes the real task. The two of us uh, emerge from the forest behind the glassblower shop. The uh, mysterious, uh, overpopulated glassblower shop, which doesn't seem to do an awful lot of business here in the town of Dongreet, and yet is always busy with activity. Smoke always billows from the chimneys, and uh, uh, shipments of glass uh, and uh, sand come in, and shipments of fine glassware go out and head down the many roads away from Dongreet. As we emerge from the forest, uh, we've got the town of Dongreet in front of us once again. All right, Igor, you and I have got two objectives. We have got to find out a little bit more about this town. I, I think just a little bit more should do it. I don't know if we should investigate one of the major landmarks here. I, I feel like... Perhaps the ruins to the south, or maybe the garrison could do it? Um, I don't know about the burned ruins, or maybe the temple ruins, or the garrison. That's up to you. That's uh, I will help, of course, but I don't know what the Stallions are going to want from you. And for me, I've got to find that box. I hope it's still there. I hope it's still there. I, I hid it well. Underneath, uh, you remember the, the wagon that we used for home for not when we left, but the first few weeks. It, it crushed in and there wasn't enough room for us anymore. I hid it back under there. All right. Now, I'm going to do a quick check here. It is, I would say it's pretty likely that uh, that the box is still there. <laughs> oh, man. oh, okay. It's not as close as I thought it was. I thought it was within two points of it of that being incorrect. Um, but uh, Illyria does not know. Illyria does not know what the current situation is. Um, and the two of us look into the town of Dongreet. Illyria says, "All right, I, I think I, I, it could take us some time to find it if it's not there. Gods, I hope it's there, but." Let's go for the box first, and then maybe after that we we look around for uh, anything else that might help the Wild Stallions. All right, are you ready? We move toward the northern edge of town, where the Expeditioneers camp, um, or I should say more accurately, simply the Travelers camp, because not all of them are Expeditioneers. Many of them are traders and merchants um, who take up residence in this campground at the northern edge of town. This being a crossroads town, uh, if you head north, it takes you out deeper into the frontier toward the Oxbends. If you head south past the burned out ruins, it will take you back toward the towers. Um, if you head west, it will take you past Castle Vesperal uh, and then to the sort of Delta swamplands, the uh, barren swamps that Rumors abound have been taken over by Duskin of all kind, which I think Illyria and Igor probably believe now more than ever. Uh, and then, of course, if you head east, it will take you to the town of Erily, and then past Erily out deeper into the um, uh, into the temperate, mysterious forests out to the east of the towers. Here we are, and we are going to have to find our way through this little camp without being spotted. At least that's what Illyria thinks. I don't know if we want a lot of eyes on us. It seems like we made an impression, I'll say, last time we were here. And it would be good if, well, we didn't make much of a scene this time. I have rolled uh, against two fives. I've rolled a four, which, um, with uh, my wits, uh, which is going to carry us across here, because um, uh, this is sort of like we're looking for the thing right now. Um, 
this is going to be a strong hit with a twist. Uh, which means that I think the two of us go darting back toward the uh, this little wagon that has collapsed into the dirt. Uh, it appears that the top parts of it have been picked clean by other people. Bits of timber useful for patching up other wagons and stuff. It's the slow process of anything that gets left behind here in the camp will eventually be used, Theseus style, to rebuild uh, other bits of wagon and gear. But the platform, sunken deep into the mud now, uh, covered with a thin layer of fresh snow, this wagon is still here. All right, okay. Uh, just keep watch while I dig out underneath here. <sighs> Scraping away, just with their hands uh, at the snow and mud concealing the edge of this wagon. Illyria closes their eyes, just desperate as the fire lights from Dozens of campfires glows all around. They reach into the shadow underneath this wagon. They feel around before. Clunk. Against a small box of wood. Oh, Igor, it's here. Oh, it's here. And I had to dig this out completely afresh. I left a few sticks so that I would know if anyone had been digging under here. They're still here. Igor, those sticks were a good idea. It's safe. No one's been here. The box is still here. Oh, thank the gods. Oh. Oh. Thank you, Weir. All right. And uh, off we go. Illyria has got a bit of a pep in their step as the two of us now head off elsewhere into Dawngreet. Uh, we weave back and forth, keeping our heads low, trying not to be spotted by any of the regulars that we might have seen here. Of course, here in the northern edge of camp, uh, of this town, where the camp is a constantly rotating cast of travelers and uh, caravans and merchants and expeditioners. Not too much to worry about, but once we get south, once we get into the rest of Dawn Greet, then it's going to become a bit more pressing. But of course, it is early in the night right now. Now, Igor, the question now becomes yours. What do you think is going to give uh, uh, yourself the best chance of making the Wild Stallions happy when they arrive back here? One, the temple ruins and the camp, northern corner of Dawn Greet, temple ruins and camp. Number two, the agriculture here. Number three, the residential district and the burned out ruins, because they were once part of the residential area. Or four, the garrison and the watchtower. Which one would you like us to explore? All right, Igor. Where are we headed? I think uh, I I'm with you all the way, unless, of course, you tell me to hang back, in which case, I suppose... Oh, I'm here. I wonder if I can... Find a, a spear shaft for my spearhead. That would be good. But it's secondary. I promise I'm focused. I've I've got the box. I could not be happier right now. I think the Wild Stallions probably want to know about the garrison. Maybe the Watchtower, but... Uh, okay. That makes sense to me. The military defenses, the town guard, they're going to be risky, but it's certainly the thing that if I were them, I would want to know the most about. And it's probably not something that we've got too much experience with. Alright, let's go. The two of us skirt southward. Um, and you have a strong success with a twist. So... I'm going to go ahead and say that that twist means that you can go ahead and carry uh, uh, this sort of situation for Illyria. The two of us head south. With your strong hit with a twist, Igor, you lead Illyria in a very safe route southward. We're going to 
sneak back through the fields after passing through the old ditch and after the fields we're going to sneak up next to the garrison or taking um, uh, the other part of the path the one that we considered taking when we were being chased out of town chased out of town oh yes I remember this <laughs> um, Illyria just seems kind of at peace we have had a lot of success so far in this venture, and uh, Illyria is just sniffing the air, enjoying this new experience of being in Dawngreat. Oh, Igor, I can smell all the crops that they are growing down here. I can smell... I think I can smell our friend, Visra. Do you remember Visra? Visra was the one who gave us those supplies. She... I, I, I think I can smell the fire that their family is using to cook. It's a totally new experience. It, the, the camp is overwhelming. But the two of us jump down into this ditch at the uh, northeastern corner of town. We run along through the mud and the snow and leap up, quickly crossing the road as the <laughs> uh, as, as we start to cross over past some of the livestock. Illyria, your drool is showing. It's not. It's not. Igor, all right? Your, your, your weird lightning is glowing. What about that? Did you ever think about that, sneaky boy? You just lead the way. I'll follow you. Illyria grins in the dark uh, as they follow you past the livestock, through the fields, and up to the side of the garrison. Now, things become a little bit more tenuous. It's important to remain very stealthy. The two of us are not going to have a lot of opportunities at this. As a matter of fact, we only need the one. But as the two of us sneak along, we find ourselves right up next to the garrison. We can see the dull torchlight of the town uh, across the street in the residential district, uh, the residential corner of town, I would say, the residential quarter. Some of the shops are open. The taverns are in full swing as this is early evening after all. And the, the workers and uh, many of the guardsmen probably, uh, the ones who are off duty, are in uh, celebrating the end of the day. And it's a winter storm coming in. There are, there's always the anxiety now during a winter storm rolling through of when will it end? When will we be back to our crops? Right now, it's a lot of trying to make sure that the, the stores are going to last through this uh, indeterminately long winter. Hopefully they will. And so there are people either celebrating a day of hard work or uh, alleviating some of their anxiety uh, over this winter storm drinking in the taverns. We sidle up next to the garrison. A good view of the crossroads from the garrison here, and up above and beyond it, we can see the watchtower just across the across the crossroads itself. All right, Igor, this one is up to you. I can cause a distraction, of course, but we are... This is going to be difficult. Uh, you are probably going to need to take a look inside. Can you... You might be able to pass through the walls here. I could see that working. Illyria just shrugs. I guess. Um, let's see. I'm going to look around. I've got... Uh, if you give me one of your supply, I, I might be able to use it to... Um, try and create a distraction. Do you have anything good for making fires in there? I think it's winter time. I don't feel terrible about burning out some, th like starting a bit of a fire. I think things should be pretty safe. But of course, there is the uh, there is that burned out district at the southern edge of town. I don't know. What do you think, Igor? Hey, Lydia, can you smell 
Where the guards are inside? Illyria's eyes light up and uh, they turn their nose to the wind. Illyria nuzzles over toward the the, uh, the the walls of this garrison, which are constructed of rough hewn timbers with spikes carved onto the top. Um, a, a real sort of like wilderness fort kind of vibe. Um, but there are definitely little little slits in between these rough timbers. I have just rolled a miss with a twist. Igor, you watch as Illyria pokes their nose through the slits between these rough hewn timbers of the garrison wall. That nose does not remain its same shape. The moon shines bright overhead. This moon uh, of the seven that is currently in its fullest phase glows bright orange down over the town of Dawn Great. And as it shines, you can see Illyria's nose stretches. You hear the snuffling noises coming from Illyria's face turn into (laughs) whining and whimpering. Illyria's ears stretch out and upward into points. The hair on Illyria's neck stands up and Illyria hunches over down, falling to all fours, snuffling. (laughs) Illyria on all fours transforms and becomes a wolf. Not a huge wolf, but a wolf nonetheless, dropping the chest beside them and starting to paw and dig at the ground underneath the garrison wall, snuffling all the time. (laughs) And from inside the garrison. Wolves! Wolves! Wolves in the town! Wolves in Dawn Great! Guard! Guard! Muster yourselves! It turns out, Illyria indeed had a transformation coming up this week. It just happened to hit at the worst possible time. y'all are excited because i certainly am what a way to go out (laughs) oh man see we knew there was one coming up and i knew i knew if something goes really 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 wrong here in the episode it would it could be kind of interesting sort of bad news for illyria to have their first transformation here in town 
and you've got Illyria trying to use their wolf stuff, and that's the moment when I roll a miss with a twist? Come on! It's perfect! It couldn't be more perfect! Igor, you have got your work cut out for you next week. I'm telling you that right now. Be ye forewarned. Igor, this is not good news for you. You have not successfully uh, 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 gathered this information about the garrison yet. You still have to do that. Illyria dropped the box, and it may be barely small enough for uh, Illyria to carry with their mouth, but probably not, frankly. Uh, which means that you, as a ghost, not great about carrying things, you're in some trouble next week, Igor. And as is Illyria. Illyria is not going to be someone who has got a lot of control in this form. Not yet. They haven't learned. This is their first transformation. And part of the reason that they're at school is to help so that they aren't just beasts to be killed by town guards when their instincts uh, cause them to run amok. Illyria is going to be learning about this stuff, but has not had the opportunity to begin doing so yet. So, Igor, you have got to get Illyria back to school. Igor, you gotta. Igor, this is on you almost exclusively. Man, I'm excited. What a... What a I'm so hyped for how this uh, this campaign has gone so far. These last two episodes have been awesome. Awesome. I'm so stoked. <laughs> Can y'all tell how hype I am? I am so hyped about this. Okay. Very cool. Very cool. We done snuck out. We're headed down to uh, we're headed down to Dawncrete, and uh, our trip has not gone on without issues. Um, Van Saves Live says, "I just got neck tattoos, and they hurt so bad. I need this stream to soothe me, but it's over, and I feel foolish." Indeed, Van Saves Lives, I'm very sorry. Which said, uh, we had too perfect a moment to go out on, um, and uh, I, I mean after. Whew, I had a bit of a week this week. Um, Y'all may notice I'm sitting on a kitchen chair instead of my uh, instead of my usual chair. My chair fully broke. I noticed I was sort of like leaning back on it. It started to sort of list off to one side. Well, it turns out I had I had broken like the least breakable part of it. Not the bolts. Not the not the like uh, sort of parts that you would imagine bending. No. The place where it was welded, the, the pole underneath is welded onto the plate underneath the chair. I had started to simply tear the metal away. Not along the weld even. It's not like it was a bad weld. I just started to tear away at the metal, literally like a sheet of paper from the middle. I don't know how it happened, but I can take some, I'm going to, I'll take some pictures for you. As a matter of fact, if I don't do it right now, I'm going to forget. So I will be right back. Just a second. I'm going to take some pictures and put them in Discord. All right, I'm back, gang. I'm back. Uh, and y'all, don't disappear anywhere yet because we've got more discussion to have about this. We still have to talk about our vows because it's possible we could be completing something potentially today. But uh, yeah, no. So after that, um, uh, I discovered that my audio for our last session with Mr. Halfbit, who did such an incredible job, you always want things like that to go well because you want to be able to honor that performance with good production of it. I discovered that my audio on that one was all goofed up. And so, you know, I was able to salvage it, but it was a difficult process. So now, after the week I've had, it's good to have another fantastic episode. Y'all, thank you so, so much for participating in this. Um, I'm, I'm thrilled by how this is going so far. I'm just absolutely thrilled. We're, we are starting to sort of like, we, we have been slowly, I, 
we're still early in this campaign as far as I'm concerned. Our, our last campaign was a year long and I would love to do another year of this, uh, you know, adding in guests and, uh, you know, doing special episodes like that. Um, even potentially like long-term guests, I would absolutely adore doing that. But you know, this is early in the campaign. This is episode seven, which is great, but it's only episode seven. Uh, and so we're going to be tying in a lot more threads here in the future, but the process of like introducing threads is great. And yet it's difficult because sometimes introducing threads can be a pretty boring process at the end of the day. You know, people aren't invested yet. And so the fact that y'all have stuck it out here with me, you have jumped in on these on these threads and you've said, you know what? I'm ready. Bring it on in. Bring it on in. I am I'm here and I'll stick around to be introduced to threads. Uh, I don't need to wait for like the action to hit immediately. So everyone, thank you so, so very much for for sticking with me here. This is the process of telling a longer story is, you know, some of these threads you have to collect quite a few of them over quite a few episodes before it ever pans out. This is like storycraft stuff, but I don't I don't know if y'all have the same experience, but I am always much more satisfied both creating and experiencing stories where a little bit of patience, I've 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 waited and these threads have been introduced over time instead of quick thread, quick resolution. Quick thread, quick resolution. Makes me very happy. Makes me very happy. And this was a great episode, y'all. A great episode. And y'all are a huge part of that. An enormous part of that. Let's talk about vows, shall we? Um, I have actually... Oh, I didn't realize. Uh, I've got a second uh, command here. Um, it is quests. Uh, the quests command, uh, I'm going to try and keep this updated with Igor's current objectives. Um, I'm calling them quests in case... Um, uh, you know, like not everyone knows the Iron Sworn term for it, but quests seems like a pretty universal term. Uh, but quests and like while we're playing Iron Sworn, quests and vows are the same thing. Um, so here are Igor's current quests. Um, <laughs> Deathrave says, I'm now in love with the headmistress. I mean, the headmistress uh, certainly has a vibe, right? She is, uh, she is aloof and, um, like I, 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 I get it. I get it. I could, I could definitely see it. Um, frankly, I don't think Illyria would dislike the the headmistress, but they are intimidated by her. Okay. Now, uh, Igor, your current objectives are basically. I'm gonna tell you how difficult all of your quests are, and then I'll go back through them and tell you how much progress you've made. So. Um, these go from troublesome one star to epic five stars. So one star is pretty easy. Five stars is really quite difficult, like multi, multi session sorts of quests. So Igor's current quests include one star, case the crossroads town before the wild stallions return. Four stars, avenge your own death. One star, make a good impression on Pinelli. Three stars, pursue academia. And two stars, study the history of Duskin. Now, I think it is possible that you have made some progress on some of these. Go ahead and put your thoughts regarding those uh, in chat for me. Uh, I want to hear. I want to hear uh, based on your current quests which ones you think you've made some sort of uh, some progress on, and I will tell you sort of whether or not I agree. Meanwhile, Illyria has also got some vows. Uh, let's see. Five stars, return to Brackwater, ready to settle down. Have not made much progress on that one. Um, uh, let's see. Two stars, Wild Stallions want me to bring them something south. Um, and uh, I think now that I've got the thing, uh, I think I am indeed going to mark some progress on that one. Um, I, I've gone ahead and picked it back up. So uh, I'm going to mark two more progress. Um, with four stars, discover the truth of the underbrush. I don't think I've gotten any closer to that one today. Um, one star, f uh, find out about my condition. Oh boy. Um, I mean, this transformation is going to be something about that, but I don't think I'm going to mark it yet because I think I've just transformed. I think I need to, like, I, I think I need to end my transformation before I I really like get into <laughs> getting experience for that. Uh, and then finally, pursue expeditioneering. Uh, which I think, I don't know if I want to do like off-screen stuff, but I also don't want to make 
I don't want to make chat necessarily like sit through a bunch of Illyria story that y'all don't have any control over. Um, y'all, uh, tell me how you feel about that over in Discord. I'm gonna be, I'm gonna start a bit of a discussion in Discord right now. Um, on tabletop, RPGs. How do y'all feel about following, uh, following classes slash scenes? with Illyria that don't involve Igor. Will that be boring? Question mark. Or will that be cool? Um, because if y'all don't want to follow Illyria, then I may do some like off screen sort of stuff and I'll probably make some rolls to see how successful they were. Um, but uh, uh, and then sort of like mark some experience based on that so that y'all don't have to watch those. And if you do think it's interesting, then we'll just play out those scenes, even though Igor won't be there. Um, let's see. Uh, death rave says, could we get progress towards avenging our death since we gathered a tiny bit of information about Luca Brusca? Um, yes, I think so. I think so. I would let you, I'll tell you what, because it's such a scant bit of information. Um, I think, uh, yeah, I will say, I will say you go ahead and you're going to get uh, two tick marks, um, which means you are at one full progress and one tick mark. Now, basically what you need to know about this is you are, you are at one out of 10 toward uh, avenging your own death, Igor. Um, that one's going to progress pretty slowly. You don't even get a full one, uh, per like incident. Um, uh, but yes, I think that makes quite a bit of sense. Yeah. You have, you have definitely, um, learned a bit more about Luca Brusca. You know that they are more widespread. Uh, and as a matter of fact, you, after having witnessed that conversation, you know, a bit more about what they are sort of like what their vow to do is, um, and so based on the connection that you've made between the runes that, that were that were on the, the weapon that actually killed you and other people that, you know, use the runes, you don't know if it's exclusive to them necessarily, but you can, I think you absolutely like, you are a step closer to, at the very least, knowing if Luca Brusca was uh, responsible for it. Um, Death Rave says, also, can you post slash pin our current vows here. You know what? That sounds like a great idea, uh, Death Rave. So uh, let me go ahead and I'm just going to copy and paste this, but I get to do fun formatting stuff. So uh, let's see. Quests range from troublesome to epic. Uh, Igor's current quests. All right. Oh boy, my <laughs> uh, Discord is not happy about all of these various asterisks that I've used. Uh, I'm hoping that this will sort of clear it out, but uh, we'll see. We'll see if this works. Nope, it definitely went ahead and goosed it. Okay, hold on. Let me edit this really quick. Uh, I guess I'm gonna have to change these to like plus signs. So... One plus, four pluses, one plus, three pluses, and two pluses. Okay, there we go. Uh, posted and pinned. Oh yeah, pin it. Cool, cool. Okay, excellent. Um, let's see. Yeah, that's a good call. Okay, so yes, um, you have learned about you've learned more about Luca Brusca, and so you know, um, they are sort of like they are a they're not just hunters; they are duskin hunters. Um, th this is based on your your the information that you've got from here in town, talking to old Vyomir, the shop owner, uh, after having fought them, uh, combining that with what you saw during your travails. You know that they are hunters and they are Duskin hunters. Now, you weren't a Duskin at the time of your death. That might be a bit confusing, but I'm going to tell you right now, this you, you have marked uh, progress toward that, which is great news. Um, now, as of this, 
as of this uh, adventure here, once you are done, uh, sort of assuming you survive this, um, uh, Igor, which frankly, you probably will. You're a ghost, and unless Luca Brusca shows up, maybe you're fine. Illyria might be the big issue. But uh, once you're done here, uh, the observations that you gather are going to give you uh, an additional plus three to your vow to case the Crossroads Town, which would put you at nine out of ten, which is like prime position to go ahead and uh, complete that particular um, uh, that particular mission. Prime positioning for it. So keep that in mind. Um, you are going to be like right there at the edge. Um... Let's see. Deathrave says he might have made a tiny bit of progress toward uh, Pinelli, showing off his manly tattoos. I think Pinelli, uh, I, I recognize the wording of this is make a good impression on Pinelli, but remember the uh, the the original stipulation was Pinelli isn't sure she, like you put off some like some urchin vibes. It's how you've lived all of your life and it's how you have survived Igor. And so it makes sense that you put off some vibes. It's Again, these vibes are the sort of thing that makes people hesitant to mess with you back in uh, back in your gate town. But Pinelli is hesitant to get involved. And so the good impression is not so much like show off some cool tattoo or some cool scars. It's more along the lines of you got to show Pinelli you're a good person. And frankly, maybe Igor is not intent on making that impression. Like, it would be a perfectly reasonable choice for you to say, it's, uh, we're, like, we're surrounded by a lot of people I don't know here. My instinct as Igor is to not try and make an impression that I'm a good person. If I do that, then I I, I look weak or something. I don't, y'all can decide how Igor thinks about this, but um, it's possible you would choose to abandon this particular vow. That would be as valid a character choice as trying to complete it and and uh, really like form a bond with Pinelli. Either one of those are f fully valid character choices. Um, but I think uh, your your history of Duskin. Um, I'm gonna go ahead and give you um a, another bit of info there as well because you've completed your first travail um which i don't think every single travail is necessarily going to give you like uh xp on this but your history of duskin track i'm going to give you uh, uh i'm going to i'm going to you're going to mark more progress um for the history of duskin you mark two at a time and you are currently at uh four out of ten and basically it's it's kind of like you take a bit of a risk saying I'm going to complete this quest. Um, if it's if it's not super high, then you risk having the quest um, sort of like fail in a way or or take a lot longer. Or if um, uh, if the quest uh, is high enough, if you've pr proceeded far enough along, then uh, you should have a pretty easy time of completing the quest. But it just comes down to a roll essentially. Um, so I should probably go ahead and I want to include. Um, I want to edit this message to include how far you've actually progressed along each of these. So let's get rid of this first of all. Lots of lots of fiddly. Uh, Y'all know how I feel about uh, formatting stuff, right? Okay, uh, and just a reminder for you all. Uh, I, I'm. So A, I'm, I don't know if I'm going to update this every time, but uh, I'll update it for right now. Um, so currently, Crossroads Town is at 6 out of 10. Um, avenging Your Own Death is at 1 out of 10. Making a Good Impression on Pinelli is at 3 out of 10. Pursuing Academia is at 1 out of 10. Because uh, you haven't really had your first class there. You probably will next next week or the week after, depending on how long it takes for us to get back out of Dawn Greed. Uh, and then studying the history of Duskin, I'm going to put you at 4 out of 10. Because you definitely know a little bit more as of uh, as of your, your travail there. You know not only about like who you are as a Duskin because of the doing the travail itself, but also like Luca Brusca, like a, a threat to Duskin. That's part of who Duskin are. Um, so there is that. 
Um, Deathrift says, I also, I really want to know how Illyria did in Capture the Flag. Okay. Yeah, I get that. That makes sense. Um, okay. So it looks like uh, I'm seeing over in Discord, like a fair bit of agreement that you want to see scenes that don't involve Igor. You, if, uh, if, if we're following Illyria, uh, if there's a scene that doesn't involve Igor, but Illyria is still down, down to, uh, <laughs> to do stuff. Um, you want to see those scenes. So it looks like that's the direction we will head. Please, if you disagree, um, or frankly, Either way, please weigh in on that discussion over in Discord. If you are wondering how you can find the Discord, if you're new around here, go ahead and use the links command. That will take you to the link tree. That is the link to share, and I would be so thankful if you do. And that's the link to follow, especially to Discord, but also to some of our other media stuff. Um, and uh, with that, folks, I think, I think we are pretty well good to go. Van Saves Lives says, Avenge Your Own Death is a hell of a quest label. Yes, it is Van Saves Lives. It was one of our very, I think it was our like foundational quest here because as we built the character, we knew there were going to be a ghost. It was just a matter of how did that go down. Um, same with my character. We knew before session one that uh, I was going to end up being a lycan. We just didn't know how that was going to go down um, because it was going to be like, you know, foundational. You know, these these characters, they're going to be, it's, it's super important like who they are and what they are. Um, because it's going to be the majority of the campaign. Like, y'all got to spend exactly one session as not a ghost. <laughs> um, yeah. Yeah. So, everyone, I hope you've enjoyed today. I certainly have. Um, this brings me a lot of joy. Uh, it brings me a lot of joy when people are invested in this. Um, and so all of you folks who have like shown up here, uh, Van, you know, it doesn't matter if you're late or what, like Van, like, Hey, I, I'm, I'm here for the stream. Uh, like that enthusiasm is fantastic. Death Rave, uh, for showing up here and really leaping in with both feet. Uh, Sander for being a part of this for a long time. Uh, so thankful. Uh, gems uh, also like gems here for, for forever. Um, and, uh, y'all who have like, y'all who have all joined in and been a part of this, I'm really thankful for you. This project means a lot to me because this is a story. This is our story, right? I, I've read a lot of stories to you. Um, and I think we share them in the way that they are meant to be shared. I don't want to, I don't want to second guess what we do elsewhere on the channel for flying sidecar, vintage sidecar. I think we, we share those stories in a great way that, uh, helps both of us to understand them better and at better depth, but that doesn't make those stories ours necessarily. And I'm so thankful that A, y'all are here to listen to me tell a story to you, right? A, a story that is that is my own, that I am creating, um, but also that you are here to tell that story with me and take on a lot of that same, um, uh, take on a lot of that same creative responsibility and energy and that, that you want to collaborate with me to do that. Yeah, it brings me so much joy. This is this is not one of my best viewed projects, uh, side cannons, and yet it is possibly the one closest to my heart at the end of the day. Thank you all so much for being here.